Hey everyone, we have another video today of Royal Caribbean's Harmony of the Seas. In this video, we'll focus on all of the great specialty dining locations on board to help you decide which ones you would like to try during your cruise. In our last video, Tips and Tricks on Harmony of the Seas, we gave you an overview of all of the food that's included in your cruise fare. But in today's video, we're going to take a more in-depth look at the delicious specialty dining options on board Harmony of the Seas. These options you will need to purchase for an additional fee on your Royal Caribbean Cruise Planner a la carte, or you can buy a dining package like we did. We'll show you Wonderland, a very unique dining experience, Jamie's Italian, the Italian option on board, 150 Central Park, which is a fancier dining experience, Chops Grill, which is Royal Caribbean's signature steakhouse, Sabor, which is casual Mexican dining, and Johnny Rockets, which is a 50 themed dining on board. Okay, so let's talk about some of these specialty dining options on board. Let's kick off with the most unique of all, Wonderland. Wonderland is the most adventurous food experience on Harmony of the Seas. It's an Alice in Wonderland themed restaurant that is a culinary adventure. You are greeted by the Mad Hatter at your table and even reading the menu is a fun and unique experience. You take a paintbrush and bring the menu to life. Some pickier eaters may not fully enjoy what Wonderland has to offer, but you know we love food and trying new things, and Wonderland truly was an incredible experience. We highly recommend Wonderland if you want a dining experience that you'll remember. Our extra tip for this restaurant is to let your lovely server guide you through the menu with their own recommendations for the best possible experience. If you tell your server what you like and dislike, they can help make sure you try things that best fit your palate. The menu is themed by the elements fire, sea, earth, ice, and sun. There are several different courses of appetizers that they'll bring you from the different elements. They brought us the bird's nest as seen here, which is their fun spin on deviled eggs, and also the crispy crab cones, which were one of our favorites to try. Then they brought out the liquid lobster, which was bone marrow and caviar. It sounds terrifying, but it was one spoonful and it was amazing. One of the surprising appetizers that we tried and loved was the tomato water. It was a tube of what looked like cloudy water and you just drink it straight from the tube. It was fun to try and actually quite delicious and refreshing. Here is the deconstructed caprese, which has liquid olives that were so flavorful and we would definitely order this again. The wonton soup was meant to be a palate cleanser, but even that had its presentation. And look at the fun cutlery too. I'm left-handed, so I look even sillier with it. Then you get to choose an entree from the earth element. Greg went with the chicken and the egg with its fun presentation, and I went with the ribeye luscious short rib. Both of these entrees were really good, but the short rib was definitely the star of the show between the two. You can't forget dessert. Even desserts were a fun experience with great presentation. Wonderland does have a separate menu for kids that's not as adventurous if you have children in your sailing party. Overall, we would highly recommend this restaurant for a fun experience, but it's not one that you need to go back to more than once. Central Park is home to a few different specialty restaurants. We'll start with Jamie's Italian. Jamie's Italian is the restaurant of the famous British celebrity chef, Jamie Oliver. Judging by its name, I'm sure you can tell it's your prime spot for Italian food on board Harmony of the Seas. We ate here twice as we loved it so much, so we're about to show you a lot of food and this was over a couple of visits. We were able to start with any appetizers we liked and of course we had to try the famous meat plank since we love our charcuterie. We got this meat plank both times and it was absolutely fantastic. They bring out two tomato cans and then bring out this lovely big plank to set on top. This was our favorite part. From the appetizer menu, we tried the creamy burrata, which was lovely, the black truffle risotto balls, which were fried perfectly, and the tomato bruschetta. None of these disappointed us, and they were all delicious. For your next course, you can choose a small size of their homemade pasta to try to be able to still order an entree, or you can get a full-size pasta entree. Our first visit, we both tried a smaller pasta size so we could try their entrees. Greg had the creamy penne carbonara and I had the truffle tagliatelle. 
Both of these pastas were fresh and tasted amazing. My second visit here, I ordered the same pasta as my entree in the full size because it was so good. And our second visit, Greg ordered the full size portion of their baked lasagna. For our entrees the first time, Greg ordered the Chianti braised short rib, which was tender and delicious. And I ordered the lamb chop scottiadito. <laughs> Please pardon my pronunciations through this whole Italian section. And you can't forget desserts. Even though you basically had to roll us out after both of our visits, we tried the tiramisu, of course, which is Greg's favorite dessert ever, the pavlova, which is really good, but you needed to have a sweet tooth for it, and the lemon meringue cheesecake, which was also delightful. We don't think you'll be disappointed with selecting Jamie's Italian as a specialty dining option on your cruise. Next on our list, also located in the Central Park section of the ship, is 150 Central Park. 150 Central Park is a modern, elegant dining environment if you're looking for a fancy place to dine. We also ate here twice on our sailing as we had the dining package. If you dine here without a dining package, this one could be on the more expensive side. Their bread service to start was absolutely delicious. We could have filled up on bread alone that it was so good. We highly recommend ordering the Urban Garden Martini, which is their signature cocktail and is made tableside for you. It's refreshing and delicious. Over two different visits here, we tried a couple of different appetizers. We tried the roasted spice pumpkin bisque, which was creamy and delicious. We also tried the braised short rib, which was flavorful and tender, but the star of the show for their appetizers is the crispy Berkshire pork belly. We highly recommend this one. For our entrees, our first visit, Greg ordered the seared venison loin, which he said was fantastic. I don't like to eat Bambi, so I did not partake in this one. The first time we were there, I ordered the beef tenderloin, which was so amazing that on our second visit, we both ordered the beef tenderloin for two to try. On both our visits, our lovely servers also brought us out the lobster thermidor to try, which is usually its own entree, but we were still able to enjoy the lobster portion of it. Everything here was absolutely delicious. Again, you can't forget dessert. 150 Central Park has some lovely dessert options too, and we got to try a few of their different ones, and they were all really delicious. If you're looking for an elegant place to eat with delicious food, 150 Central Park is a great choice. Right across from 150 Central Park is Chops Grill. Chops Grill is Royal Caribbean's signature steakhouse across their fleet. They start you off with bread service, but the pretzel bread was definitely our favorite. After bread service, they'll bring out as many appetizers as you'd like to try. For our appetizers, we tried the jumbo lump crab cake, the charred beef carpaccio, and the grilled black pepper bacon, which is a giant hunk of thick cut bacon. Then you can choose your entree, which I went for the filet steak and Greg ordered the ribeye steak. You get to choose the side dishes you'd like to come with your meal to share on the table. We had the cheese tater tots, the mac and cheese, and the truffle fries, and the sides were on the weaker side here. And again, can't forget about dessert. We had the red velvet cake for dessert and the lemon meringue, and they were both delicious. For us, Chops Grill was probably our least favorite of the restaurants that we tried. It wasn't bad by any means, it just wasn't to the same level as the others. Now let's head to the boardwalk. The boardwalk is home to two more casual specialty dining spots. So let's start with Sabor. Sabor is Royal Caribbean's Mexican themed restaurant and available on many ships across their fleet. This isn't the first ship that we've been on where we ate at Sabor. We love Mexican food, so this was a must for us and we ate here for lunch on two different days. This is a casual laid back atmosphere to enjoy some fresh guacamole and salsa. They make amazing margaritas. Our favorite is the avocado margarita. If you want to try one of their delicious margaritas without dining here, you can on board Harmony of the Seas. You can go up to their walk-up bar anytime while they're open to order a drink. We tried their queso fundido, chicken stuffed jalapeno appetizer, which was delicious, and Greg ordered the red snapper ceviche. It was good, but we preferred the jalapenos. And they have delicious Mexican entrees. We tried their tacos, their chicken quesadillas, and chicken flautas, which were my personal favorite. We definitely recommend Sabor. It's a great, cheaper specialty dining option and a very casual laid back atmosphere. 
Right across from Sephora's Johnny Rockets. Johnny Rockets is a 50s themed diner. This is definitely the cheapest of all of the specialty restaurants, but it has very fun theming. This is your go-to on the ship for hamburgers, fries, and onion rings, but they are most famous for their milkshakes. The milkshakes here were really delicious, so we highly recommend those. Lunch and supper both are an upcharge to dine here. However, pro tip, if you're looking for a fun spot to order breakfast on the ship, breakfast at Johnny Rockets is actually free included in your cruise fare. We came here to have breakfast one morning before getting off the ship for a port day. We really enjoyed our breakfast here versus the Windjammer as it's a lot less busy. However, seating is very limited inside so you may have to wait unless you want to sit outside. Johnny Rockets is an affordable, fun place with something that everyone would like in your group. The only restaurant on Harmony of the Seas that we didn't eat at on this cruise was Izumi, but we hope to next time. We hope that this video gave you a great idea of which specialty restaurants you would like to try while on board. Our top recommendation for food would be Jamie's Italian. For a casual dining spot, we recommend Sabor. For a fancy night out, we recommend 150 Central Park. Or for an experience to remember, we recommend Wonderland. If you haven't already, make sure to check out our Harmony of the Seas playlist for our other cruise videos. If you enjoyed this video, we greatly appreciate if you would like and subscribe. Comment below what your favorite restaurant is. We would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.